Okay then, folks. How's it all going? I thought I'd jump on a few minutes early because I know otherwise I'm going to overrun. Today we're going to be doing some meiosis and if we get far enough into it, then some diversity as well. I'm actually just going to pull up what you can see to make sure everything is working nicely. Um, it tells me in the admin panel in YouTube that everything is live and groovy. Um, okay, last time I got an error code though, so no, we're looking, looking good. Um, okay, this is going to be pretty action-packed. It's going to be pretty fast-paced. I'm sure you guys are going to have questions. I will try and take them either at the end or between sessions. Um, I'm going to be doing it. So you're going to need pen. You're going to need paper. The recording will be available. This is for AQA, for OCR, for Excel, and I'm sure pretty much for more or less any exam board, but they are the three that I specialize in and know off the top of my head. Um, if you've got non other exam board questions, then I don't know if I'm going to be able to help you. I'm going to try and cover as much content as I can. I will not start before 10 a.m. doing the live content, but you need pen and paper. I'm going to be doing landscape notes. So you want to flip your page landscape. You might not be able to keep it. Well, I'm going to be creating them with you. I've got my template from my content guide template right here. If, if, if it's too much and you can't follow along and you can't, basically keep up, then I would suggest just paying full attention to the words that I'm saying, maybe annotating around those things and writing down some bits and pieces. That synthesis writing by hand is much more effective than writing on a, on a laptop or taking notes. Um, I would say try and take notes as you go, Anna, but, uh, or Annie, sorry. Um, <clears throat> it might be a bit quick. I don't know. I'm going to be writing them. So you have a good chance of writing them. Obviously, I'm going to have to write them first and I'm not going to be hanging around too long because there's a lot of content that I want to cover. This is me teaching. I'm going to start with actually a bit of boring key term stuff. Meiosis is key term heavy, just like all of A-level biology. I will share my screen. You will see exactly what's going on with me and uh yeah i'm gonna see how much i can get through um and i'm not gonna pause too much in the way of questions because every single topic i possibly teach no matter how i explain it there will be people with questions and if i stop and answer all the questions then i will not ever get through very much content i would try and keep the like i would try to take notes i would try to be focused on that try not to get too distracted with the chat um, and try and follow along. Obviously, some of this you may have done before. Some of this, it might be new to you, depending on what your teachers have or have not covered. Um, so it's going to be year 12 content. Understanding meiosis is so key. This is one of the few areas where I might go into slightly more detail than is actually in your spec. And the reason for that is because if you don't get your head around what happens to the chromosomes, then... Um, you are going to be really struggling when it comes to inheritance, which is what's coming up next. Although the really tricky bits with inheritance is actually coming up next. Uh, not, I was going to say next week, but it's actually going to be tomorrow. Quick note, I'm also not going to be here on Friday. I've just booked a flight to return to the UK. So if anyone has a spare property for me to self-isolate in, I, my parents are over 70 and I can't stay with them. Send us an email, office at Taylor Tutors, just a blatant, just, uh, looking for somewhere to stay. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I've got a flight and I land on Saturday morning. So I'm not here Friday. I'll be ready. Have you got pen and paper? Have you got red, blue, black, and green pen? It's all you need. If not, one color is just fine. You can come back next time tomorrow with your red, blue, black, green pen. Oh my God, I have no idea how this is going to go. Um, because I have not covered this in bloody ages, but I'm gonna call this, this is the introduction to meiosis, this section right here. So let's gonna see how we go. I'm actually gonna pull, just let me rearrange some windows here because I'm going to need to see the chat. I try and keep the chat visible as I'm creating these things. What's going on here? Um, let's go to this. Okay, I think I'm about ready to, well, I've got to find this so I can screen share. Pens and paper, iPad, share, go, go away. Oh, it's a baz bazillion pop-ups. I'm not used to teaching these things without having a second monitor. Obviously I'm in 
well, okay, you, I think, to be honest, I don't really need to see what I'm doing awfully much. Okay, I can see the chat. So if something's weird's going on, it's paused, it's not updating, then let me know. I'm gonna start with red pen. Red pen is for key terms. Key terms are the words you are going to need to either understand or to be able to give a definition of in the exam. These ones looking that I'm gonna come up with first. Okay, a little bit of an intro to uh, the template notes from Taylor Tutors. If you are using them, you'll see um, you've got the black line on the left-hand side with You've got meiosis, oh, let's actually be a bit neater than that. Meiosis, mitosis, gametes, haploid, diploid, and fertilization. This is designed so you can summarize the key points on this little section, fold it over, use it as a flashcard afterwards. The main bulk of notes is going on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna start here with gametes. So gametes are haploid sex cells. Um, this is actually what defines male and female. Um, I, I was going to ask you questions and engage you with all of this, but I think I'm just going to plow through content. So what defines you as being a male or a female is which gamete do you make? It's got nothing to do whether you've got a penis or a vagina. The organs uh, like ovaries obviously produce the egg. So it's kind of linked to that. But um, sperm are made by males. And these are small. So the smaller gamete is the male and the egg is obviously female. And this is large. It's called an isogamy, non equally sized gametes. That is not A level biology need to know spec. We then have haploid. What do I mean by haploid? And I'm going to put a little lower case n. Um, and that is what we usually use to denote a haploid cell. So this is a cell with a, a single set of chromosomes are unpaired chromosomes. So I'm gonna say it's a cell with a single set of unpaired chromosomes. Um, there's basically, there is one of each homologous pair. Um, I'm going to define homologous pair at some point, probably not on this page. And then we've got diploid. Diploid is generally 2N. And so you can guess here, this is a, a cell with, um, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to simplify this. And I said it's a cell with one of each homologous pairs, or maybe one homologous pair from each parent. So it's a cell with, um, both. I'm going to do some more homologous pairs on the next template note that I've got. I'm going to put one from each parent. From each parent. Um, okay. Next definition we need to know. I'm actually going to breeze over on this. Oh, free. This is for fertilization. We don't need to know much about fertilization. Edexcel, go into more detail on this, is the fusion of two haploid gametes to form a zygote. In humans, plants actually do. If you do WJ and you plant stuff, it, there's triploid endosperms and stuff like that. But for the purposes of everyone else, fusion of two haploid gametes. Um, to form, oh dear, if I write quickly, my handwriting goes to shit, form a diploid zygote. Okay, so then they've got key facts, headline facts. Um, I'd say just create your notes from scratch. If you've got a subscription, they're all in, they're all in the content guide go download our template notes. If not, then look how many, like how many words were written on this page beforehand. There was the title, some underlines, it's not a difficult place to recreate yourself. Okay, switching color to titles and subtitles are gonna go in blue. Meiosis, my way of remembering meiosis. Meiosis sounds like mayonnaise. Mayonnaise looks like spunk and spunk is gametes. So how many mayonnaise is it double N? Sperm. Just little ways of 
remembering things super important because there's so much to learn little memory hooks the ruder they are the little the little the more they stand out in your brain the easier they're going to be to remember so headline facts with meiosis which is obviously what we're talking about but there's common questions comparing the differences between the two and needing to know need to know yeah feel free to share little sort of memory hooks and mnemonics in the chat for others to to, to learn from in fact i'm going to go a bit of uh what have we got here it's kind of so it's meiosis is cell division to form gametes and mitosis is cell division for growth and repair basically So to replace cells like for like. Okay, so there are two divisions. And for meiosis, there is one division. In my meiosis, they're called meiosis one and meiosis two, generally referred to with Roman numerals. So meiosis one, capital I. Um, what else do we need to know? Well, because you've got one cell divides once to form two, and then again to provide, we have four daughter cells. Daughter cells. And here, obviously, you have one division, we have two. Daughter, if I could just take a second. And we have, we end up with genetic variation over here. I don't know why I started writing a capital T, genetic variation. And this is caused by which two things? I'll ask you, I'm not gonna pause for the answer, but what two things? Again, I would generally say, pay attention to writing notes if you can follow. Um, this is genetic variation is caused by crossing over there will be a full video on this in and by independent. You can, segregation is where they actually separate. Independent assortment is where they line up on the, during metaphase one of meiosis one, but I'm gonna go okay, segregation here, segregation. Obviously you can't quite see the tails of my Gs and stuff like that. In terms of meiosis, fertilization doesn't contribute to, fertilization does, contribute to genetic variation, but in here I'm specifically talking about meiosis. So the two ways that genetic variation is introduced are through crossing over and independent segregation. And if these would be genetically identical, genetically identical, and to each other and to their parent cell. Okay, I'm gonna give you 10 seconds on that. Obviously the recording will be available. You can come back to the recording and pause it at this moment. If you need a complete set of that, the idea, I'll talk you through the idea for using these side pieces over here um, is for you to be able to sort of basically summarize the key term, blah, 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 in here. And then to fold it over. And then you've got like a mini flashcard of summarizing. This is basically all key terms. All my lessons are not just pure text, but this is so important uh, specifically to, um, you know, to specifically to these, these terminology when I'm, I'll, I'll go through homologous pair a bit more detail in this next, um, next piece. You can say random assortment if you want to as well, independent assortment, totally fine. Um, there appears to be a pretty massive delay. So I'm definitely not going to loiter too long. Now this one, I'm basically, I need to, uh, Make sure I get my spacings a bit more right on this. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. We're in the next lesson. I call this before meiosis. So many students get this confused. I put in an extra video and I called it before meiosis. It's kind of like introduction to meiosis too. And I don't usually preface things this much, but I'm gonna basically go through the different phases that we go through. So this would be early interphase. What happens in interphase, which is interesting in terms of, oh, I think I'm in the wrong thing. What happens during interphase, which in terms of cell cycle is important. So early interphase. 
and then I'm going to have late interphase and then I'm going to have prophase and this is meiosis prophase one which means I'm in meiosis one so DNA replication is going to take place between early interphase and late interphase now if we actually look at a nucleus of a cell I'm going to draw these a bit smaller and obviously this is, I'm going to, well, this is just the nucleus right here. You would see, what would you see? Can you see chromosomes? If you actually look at a nucleus of a cell, if you have a powerful enough microscope, I'm supposed to be drawing a nice, this is our nucleolus. Which I'm not doing a great job of highlighting. I might even just, okay. But basically, you, you can't see chromosomes. They have not condensed. You just see squiggles. So if you were to actually look at it, you would see this, both in early interphase, both in late interphase. Obviously, there's going to be some more DNA present because it's, it's replicated in late interphase. If you could see condensed so actually, let's put a note on this because this is a bit confusing. This is like reality. It's like if condensed. Okay, so if they were condensed, what would you see? What would, now we'd be able to see differences here. So in, uh, how much space do I need to leave? And obviously in prophase one, it is condensed. It's not hypothetical in prophase one because they do condense in prophase one. But if we could see them condensed, I'm going to draw three chromosomes here. Um, I'm going to draw them in their pairs because it's going to make things a bit easier for people to follow. They would not, obviously this doesn't exist. What I'm drawing right now, it, it looks like how I've drawn it above, but you would have, these would be our homologous pairs. It's early interface has not replicated yet. This is just normal, normal. Um, let's say the colored in ones come from your mom and the hollow ones come from your dad. And I'm gonna draw a third one. So these are our normal homologous pairs. Nothing is replicated at this point. We're early interface. Again, how many chromosomes have we got and how many homologous pairs have we got? So we've got um, six chromosomes and we've got three homologous pairs. Okay, now, now late interphase, I'm gonna draw them, oh, do I wanna draw them side by side? I'm not gonna draw them side by side because that would be confusing. It might confuse you with metaphase. Again, this is not what they actually look like. You cannot, you will never see this because it's not reality, but to make the point clear about what's happened to the DNA, it's essential. So we've got our green. So we've got our green hollow one over there and our green filled in one. Now we've got these X-shaped chromosomes. I used to think when I did my A-levels, this is what chromosomes look like all the time. In fact, maybe I can just make my life a bit easier and zoom in a bit whilst I'm doing this. This is not what chromosomes look like unless they've replicated and they've condensed. Uh, what else other colors did I have? I had a blue one. And I had a red one. They're not in any particular order. That's how they look. Now, how many chromosomes have I got and how many homologous pairs have I got? Well, I've got six chromosomes and I've got three homologous pairs. Nothing has changed. What has happened is that this cell is diploid 2N and this is diploid. It's diploid because both 
homologous pairs are present. We've got the hollow green and we've got the dark green. If both of the homologous pairs are present in the same nucleus at the same time, it's diploid. It's diploid. And so it's 2N. And this is everything is doubled. So this is actually doubled and it's 2N because we've got both hollow green and light green, hollow red, light red, sorry, hollow red, dark red, and it's just doubled. And during prophase, well, in prophase, I suppose the nuclear envelope is breaking down. So I could put in some little, oh, that deleted the whole thing. Well, I suppose I can, I can delete the whole thing and draw it as a slightly dotted line. During, during this point, the nuclear envelope is, this is not the nuclear membrane with pores in it. This is the nuclear membrane breaking down. And we've basically got the same as we've got. I wonder if I can just copy. It would save me some time if I could copy it. Let's just, let's just zoom in. Again, during oh, a bit more time and effort would be nice. During prophase, they're not organized in they only organize into nice organized bits during metaphase. So they're not in any particular order or arrangement at this point. I'm not gonna to dwell too much on making my drawings beautiful. Time is of the essence. Okay, so we could maybe put DNA replication. We go from, and again, we've got six chromosomes, so six chromosomes and three homologous pairs. Um, what else, what I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, um, that homologous pairs, let's give a little bit, that's where I'm going to define homologous pair. So it's one chromosome from each parent. And it's the same genes, but different alleles. Let's get in a bit closer down here, if it will let me. Okay, so basically, I'm gonna draw this, I'm gonna just pick the blue one. This, oh, let's do it a little bit higher than that. This is a chromosome. This is also called a chromosome. So again, DNA replication has taken place here. Um, this is what it looks like on the left-hand side. This is what your, if it was condensed, which it's not, it's only condensed during prophase in the rest of mitosis or meiosis. If it, was, if it was condensed, this is what a chromosome would look like all of the time. It only ever looks like this X-shaped thing during cell division, which is the only time that we can see them, which is why you get the misconception that chromosomes look like the one on the right hand side all of the time. So this is also technically, I call this in my language when I'm differentiating between them and I'm going to put it, this is called a chromosome. And in my language, I'm going to say this is a double chromosome. Um, double chromosome is not going to win you any marks on the exam for key terms. That is no value for saying it's a double chromosome. Okay, so then we're going to break this down a little bit more. We've got two. This is a sister. In fact, these are sister chromatids. Now these are identical copies. These are a mirror image of one another. So these are um, exact copies. They have the same genes and the same alleles. 
That's why they're sisters. We call these sister chromatids. This in here is the centro and yeah, I need a centromere. Um, this is going to join the chromosomes. Cent so you have also centrioles move to the poles. The centromere joins the two sister chromatids on the chromosomes. Um, its homologous pair will have the same genes, but it will have different alleles because you get one from your mother and one from the father. Um, a non-sister chromatid, I was asked on the course the other day, well, I've got my two red ones. So these, uh, maybe, these would be sister chromatids because they're identical. And then this would be the non-sister chromatids because it's the same it's the same homologous pair it's got the same genes on it but they're non-sister because they're non-genetically identical so that's only ever comes up in crossing over and to be honest i could only see um ocr going into that much detail just so that you know i don't think that's necessary for the notes i'm just going to take that off actually if you want to come back to the recording obviously i've done it so it will be there but sister chromatids are on the same homologous chromosome on, sorry, on the same chromosome, and non-sister is on its homologous partner. Chromatid, you, once they break apart, technically it's a chromosome, you can, this is what a chromosome looks like or a chromosome contains for its entire duration. Um, how are we doing for time? Whew, we're getting there. Okay, 10 seconds. I'm going to give you that. How are you doing? How are you doing in terms of keeping up? Are you keeping up reasonably well? Am I making sense? You kind of can refer to a single one as a chromatid, except sometimes chromatids are only really relevant if it's two sisters that are joined. You two joined via a centromere. As soon as the centromere splits, yes, now you have two independent formerly sister chromatids, but sometimes you're just talking about a chromosome on its own and that's actually different. Okay. Oh my God, I'm not looking forward to this one, to be honest, because I don't know how I'm going to get through it. This is more detail you need to know and I might skip a few details here. You don't need to know the ins and the outs of meiosis. However, the problem with that is that you're going to learn inheritance at some point. And when you learn inheritance, it is difficult unless you understand what's happening to what are the stages tell me the stages of meiosis or mitosis the first four are the same we have pro phase one we have meta phase one we have ana phase one and we have telo phase one and we can put them on repeat. So let's go pro phase two, meta phase two, anaphase two, and telophase two. Okay. Oh my God. What are the two bullet points you need to know for prophase? I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Um, for prophase, if it said, what happens during prophase? Two bullet points. The chromosomes condense from that loose, crazy, spaghetti-like mass of chromatin. They shrink up and they form their discernible chromosomes. And obviously at that point, they're going to be a couple of chromosomes. We can say the nuclear envelope breaks down. Some you could maybe say the centrioles move towards the poles. Generally, I think cell organelles replicating is going to be done in late interphase. 
And I mean, remember, this is a continuous process that we break down into discontinuous chunks for our convenience when learning it. These are the two main ones. I'm not going to dwell too much. Um, okay, so I'm going to go through the points first. Metaphase, what happens? Yeah, spindle formation. I could. I, I might put, to be honest, again, it's a continuum. I, I might put spindle fibers form. I think I have seen that on some mark schemes. Okay, so the chromosomes line up on the equator. How do they line up on the equator? And this is the main difference um, between mitosis and meiosis. Line up in pairs on the equator. Maybe the spindle fibers attached to the centromeres. It's pretty much the two bullet points you need to know there. Anaphase. This would be, I suppose, I suppose we could say crossing over. During metaphase one. Yeah, so spindle fibers contract. I would say, well, if we're going to go with that, we could do independent. This would have to be, what do I have to write here if I'm writing this in anaphase? Independent what? I'm going to leave that one with you. Um, can I say random assortment? Assortment is how they arrange. They are already arranged. So I cannot say independent assortment here. I have to say independent segregation. Segregation. Because this is where they're separating. So we could say homologous pairs. are separated. Um, they're pulled to opposite, opposite poles. Anyone can say independent assortment and anyone can say independent seg seg uh, segregation. But if you're talking about the, the assortment is when they line up. Okay, let's draw metaphase right now. Um, I'll stick with my same colors. So here they line up in pairs. I'm going to go, I'm going to think of either the hollow or the, yeah, okay. I'm just going to make it up. I don't need to go into that much detail. Okay. So now it's, it's, a, it's, it's assorted itself. The thick one's gone on the right, the thin one's gone on the left. That is random. Flip a coin for the next one. I'm going to pick solid. First person to say left or right. In the chat. This is how much delay there is. This is how much delay there is. Da, 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 left. Okay, so the solid is going on the left. 50-50, I didn't know what you were going to say. And that means the hollow one must go on the right. Um, everyone said left, interesting. Um, I'm just going to do the last one myself. And again, it's 50-50. I could have asked you again, which one to go, which side. So that's our independent assortment. It's assorted here. But now during segregation is when they're going to be separated. Um, let's, I'm, I'm dotting all over the map here. Are you staying with me? Um, anaphase, you're, if you ever have to draw this, which is very rare that you have to draw it, you need to sort of draw them being pulled in by their centromere because they're, imagine cooked spaghetti and you've got a hook in the middle of the spaghetti and you pull it, the loose cooked bits are going to drag behind into this weird sort of V shape. So um, you're going to end up with something that 
looks like this because the spindle fiber is contracting, the centrioles are here. I won't draw the other, obviously the red and the green are doing the same. Um, the, at this point, they can't, they've chosen at metaphase. That's when the assortment happens, the left or the right, it totally random. Crossing over would happen here. If I were to draw a little bit of crossing over, um, you're quite right. This is, I'm gonna draw it in red because that's the pen that I have selected. I don't normally draw crossing over on this diagram just because it's complicated as enough as it is, but you're right, it does happen. And I don't know whether I'm gonna have time to get into that bit, so. So this is, I'm just zooming in at this point on what would be actually happening here. Um, and then after crossing over, we'd end up with the left-hand side of the solid one not being affected. And the right hand side would have swapped over for the hollow bit on the left and then the same. So again, because you've got the same genes at the same loci, but different alleles, now we've got a new combination of alleles. So crossing over results in a new combination of alleles and independent segregation results in a new combination of chromosomes. Um, okay, let's go back and fill in some bullet points for telophase one. Do they ask you bullet points for telophase one? I'd say that the nuclear membrane reforms, nuclear envelope, I mean, this is basically the same bullet points as you'd write for mitosis. Obviously the difference being the homologous pairs lining up on the equator. In mitosis, they line up in single file, one, one double chromosome on its own straight down the middle. And we can maybe say the cell divides, obviously that is technically cytokinesis. but at this level, we don't need to talk about that. They don't ask you any detail stages on the rest of these, but basically it's very similar again. Um, the second division, if I were to draw my, my meiosis two, if my, my centro, it actually happens in the opposite plane. So if the first division goes like this, the second division goes like this. Tiny point, you don't need to know. I don't think questions have ever. So this time, our, our, let's draw what we would have. I will take, so these, I'm gonna take this on the right hand side. So now this cell would contain, um, actually just draw the metaphase one, screw it. I've got the dark solid blue. I've got the hollow green and the hollow red. Figure the drawings are getting worse and worse, aren't they? It's because I'm rushing more and more. Okay, it would happen actually in this in this plane. And obviously, technically, I suppose if I'm being pedantic, then we'd have a little bit of crossing over taking place on that one. Maybe a little bit's cross we've gone place on that one. And if I was being really pedantic, we could have some crossing over taking place. And obviously anaphase is gonna split them. I'm gonna just leave a few, split them down the middle here. The centromere will divide. I'm gonna, and then they get pulled to their opposite poles. And then in telophase, we would have, I'm gonna draw two, oh, actually I'm drawing that the wrong way around, aren't I? We would have like what I call like a double fried egg if I'm draw, drawing it like that with our nucleus here. And I, so it's sort of dividing. These guys are gonna go up, we'd end up with, a blue guy like this. We've got um, in the top half, we've got red one like this. Green one like this. 
should have drawn my other red whilst I was at it, but never mind. And we'd end up with does independent segregation. Um, well, they're not independent. It's not possible because these are attached by the centromere. Um, I can orientate in either plane. Can that happen? If, because I don't know off the top of my head, you definitely don't need to know. I don't think you would call it independent segregation because it's the, chrome, the homologous pairs are independent of one another up here. It's they can they can associate independently left or right. Technically, obviously, the chromosome, the double chromosome could be either way up. So this this bit that's done, it's crossing over could be above or below. You won't if I don't know it off the top of my head, you don't need to know it. And then let's put some ends on here. This would be we've got have we got both within the nucleus, have we got both of the homologous pairs present for metaphase or anaphase for that matter, because they're still within the same, still within the same cell. Actually, we don't have a nucleus. They're not in the nucleus. This is just the cell. Do we have both, both the solid and the hollows present? Yes, we do. Therefore, it's diploid. And do we have the chromosomes? Yes, we do. If you've got that X-shaped chromosome, you put an X here. And then this would be therefore two times two n is how we figure out what's going on in there. Well, after telophase, we would just have this half of these over here. And so in this is a weird situation where we have, um, okay, well, let's just do the metaphase one. Within this nucleus, have we got both pairs present? Have we got the dark blue and the light blue whole chromosomes present down here? No, we don't. We don't. So this is just now haploid because its partner is missing. Diploid means you've got both homologous chromosomes present. Both homologous chromosomes are not present. You've got one half of them, N. But are the chromosomes X-shaped? Yes, they are. So this is actually two times N. Two times because what this is normal over here. Oh, in fact, no, this is, this is haploid. It's not quite normal. <laughs> um, so this would be two times N. And this, do we have... Um, do we have both in this nucleus? Let's just zoom in just in this nucleus. Have we got both partners present, both the solid and the light blues or the solid and light greens? No, we don't. So this is N. Do we have X-shaped chromosomes present? No, we don't. So this is just N. So they're the, they're the outcomes that we can have here. And obviously if we were to fuse two gametes, Hmm, just ignore this bit down here. If two gametes were to fuse and we were to have our nucleus again, we would have our um, one blue, we'd have another blue, and forget the solids at this point, we'd have two greens, and we would have two reds because we would be taking two gametes, which would both be the same as the N, haploid gametes and we would form a diploid normal cell. That's what a diploid one would look like. And the reason therefore this is two times because up here we've got the two, we've got every chromosome has replicated itself. This would be a zygote, diploid zygote, yeah. Obviously, if you wanna fill in all the gaps, you don't need to recall any of this information for the exam. It's not recall knowledge, but it is important to know what happens to these chromosomes. And I'm gonna try and fly through this one super duper, uber quickly, because we don't have much time. Um, and what am I doing? Um, I want, no, this isn't genetic variation. Two times N is not the same as, okay, let me just go to, I don't have it down there have it here, two times N is, um, oh, I need to do it with colors. I can do it a bit thicker.
Okay, this nucleus, oh, it's not black, is times two because it's a cross shaped. You've got one blue, one red, and one green. So it can only be N. It's not got its partner, but it's times two because we've got this half of this and half of this. It's double what you would normally have. So this is two times N. Whereas 2N would look like this. And this is diploid. Oh, why do I keep picking green instead of black? Rushing. You see the difference? Here we've got homologous pair. We've got this one comes from your father. This one comes from your mother. And we've got one of each pair. Therefore, it is diploid. Here we've only got one blue, one red, and one green. Therefore, it is haploid. But the DNA has duplicated it. This is normal state, if you like, over here. And this is double chromosome state. So they are different. Okay. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Can we do it? Oh, what we're doing. Whoa, this crazy screen. Got a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes. We can do it, I reckon. Um, so this, most importantly, crossing over gives you a different combination of alleles. And this gives you a different combination of chromosomes. Okay, when does it take place? I'm gonna say metaphase one. Do some people say, do some of your teachers tell you it's prophase one? Remember, it's a continuum. I don't think, it's, they line up next to each other. In my book, this has always been metaphase one. I think someone asked me a comment to say their teacher, someone in the course asked me the question. Let me know, I'll just take a general straw poll as to, um, as to, what, um, I'm sorry, a bit lost, getting distracted. Prophase. Well, in which case I'm gonna, do, are there marks for it? I could find out, ask me tomorrow. I'll check it in that. I don't think there's specifically recall questions on that. Um, what else have we got here? So chromatids of homologous space. Technically, this is this sister or non-sister chromatids? They don't assess you, but I'll just put it chromatids from homologous pairs. Basically, exchange alleles. It can happen like, oh, am I going to draw this? No, I was going to try and draw a crazy one, but let's just keep it simple. We've got two minutes here. Oh, my days. It's going to be horrible. Oh, I can do this, can't I? Give me a fatty. I've kind of already sketched this out, to be honest. I think it was at 1.5. And then afterwards, this would be the ones that exchange are non-sister. I oh, know I can do that. I'm making a massive hash of this. So I'm, going to, I'm going to start again with my
too close. It'll do. I think you get the idea. I've obviously got our chromosome here. So these uh, would be sister and these would be non sister. If they're attached by the same centromere, they're sisters. Obviously these guys are not attached by the same centromere, they're non sister. Does that make sense? There been, what would be the point of swapping over sister chromatids are identical. So there's no point crossing over with sister chromatids because you'd be swapping exactly the same genes and exactly the same alleles. Obviously these are swapping the same genes, but because they contain different alleles, you're getting a recombination and no genetic variation if you're swapping over sister chromatids. Um, and as I said before, I'll do two scenarios here. Oh, and I'm already overrunning. Okay. I'm going to have in my head thick or thin or solid or solid or empty. All right. You've gone right. I'm just going to go thick. So you're going to, you're in there. And therefore this is skinny. Um, give me uh, left or right. the same answer and another right I was also thinking thick um, and then give me a one or a two a two I was thinking left oh I should be not Okay, I'll stick in blue. Uh, left or right? Got left. Give me uh, one or two. One is right. So far we're the same. We could get the same with three. It's possible. Um, give me uh, left or right. Oh, you've chosen the same. Well, I'm going to just make it different just for the hell of it. I was just doing all the fix, but <laughs> in with three chromosomes, you've basically rolled the dice in the same time, three times in a row. Obviously we have 23 pairs. The chances of you rolling the same dice and getting the same left, right configuration every time for 23 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Does it matter which non-sister chromatids crosses with which? Well, obviously it's going to do with its homologous pair. It can only exchange with its homologous pair where which loci are exchanged doesn't matter. Hobie, I'd say check out the course. The, that is how much DNA you have inside the cell. I have already overrun by six minutes and I'm gonna call it a day there. Um, quick bit of feedback from you guys as to uh, what your thoughts were and usefulness and what you would like. Well, I'm going to be keep doing stuff like this. I'm not here on Friday because I'm flying last minute. Plans are changing day by day right now. Um, that was pretty quick. Um, I'd say take your own notes as soon as the, we'll start putting playlists together as quickly as we can. So there'll be a playlist for year 12. So you can come back and rewatch this. You can, you can just create obviously your notes from scratch. If you want the template notes, they are inside the content guide for AQA OCI at Excel. All of that was relevant to all of you. Um, 
that's basically everything you need to know for the exam on those topics. Meiosis is really important. I'm going to be moving into simple inheritance today um, for the in 10 minutes. I'm also then going to be moving into more complex inheritance tomorrow. So um, airlines, yeah, the flights are hopefully running. They are due to close on the end of the month, apparently. I may be back here afterwards. Yeah, Eton College, maybe. It's maybe possible. I need to find somewhere to go into isolation. I don't have any symptoms, but who knows? You could pick it up literally at arriving at the airport. So, um, okay, that is a little taste of what we're going to be doing with you. Watch this space. Things are going to change. It's going to be totally up in the air. Um, spread the word. I'd like to see more people in here to make my time as valuable as it possibly can be for everyone. Um, so spread the word and I'll see you again um, this time. So I'm good this 10 a.m. up until Thursday, assuming nothing else wild and mental gets in the way. Um, and if not, then yeah, I won't be here Friday, but we'll do something else at some other time. So see you soon. And I'll, if not, I'll see you in 10 minutes.